Republicans on the House Oversight Committee, they want more information on Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg's response to this train derailment. We're also learning several House committees are considering investigations into the derailment and the federal government's oversight of the entire railway industry. Reports suggest there could be at least one field hearing in East Palestine. Joining us this morning is Ohio State Representative Steve Demetrio. Uh, he represents Ohio's 35th district in the state house, a neighboring district to East Palestine. I know uh, there are people who are from miles around uh, East Palestine and away from uh, the community that are concerned. But uh, it seems as though Governor DeWine and the EPA have been saying it is safe for people to be back in their homes. So what do you think it is that people don't trust? Hi, Adrian. Thanks so much for having me this morning. Uh, you know, I'm really glad to hear that there's, you know, hearings both at the federal and state level in the works or happening right now. Um, you know, I think fundamentally, like you mentioned, there's a real human element to this disaster in East Palestine. Lives have been turned upside down. People have been forced from their homes. They got to pay their mortgage, pay the bills, get the kids to school on time, get to work. Um, and we haven't even begun to mention the potential long-term health effects that may come out of this. So I totally understand why people are frustrated and they deserve answers and accountability. Um, you know, so I look forward to hearing what comes out of the, these hearings. And the two things that I really want to understand are one, what are some standard operating procedures we can put in place? You know, when I was an army officer, whether we were in, on a mission in Afghanistan or back stateside on a training exercise, we had SOPs for just about everything. So as we know, the rail industry is tightly controlled by the federal government. Um, I, I want to understand, is there an SOP we can put in place to help push resources down to the, you know, most local governments, state local governments possible to make faster decisions and get resources to people who need it, like the folks in East Palestine. And then the second thing, I want to understand who's paying the bill. You know, if it comes out, Norfolk Southern's re the responsible party here. I appreciate their CEO who's been on the ground um, and trying to get things done. But I want to uh, get some assurance that, you know, they're going to be there for the long term, both on the health side and on the financial side. In terms of a government response from this state, you know, there are people who are very nervous. Uh, they are acting out of an abundance of caution, which is a term we've all become used to over the past few years, right? There's bottled sure. water that's being returned to stores uh, because people don't trust the drinking water in bottles because it was bottled so close to the derailment site. In fact, there was an entire grocery chain uh, that pulled it from their shelves. And then you've got two high school basketball teams who are scheduled to play in East Palestine who forfeited their games because they didn't feel safe. Is that the right response? Look, I, I think a lot of these people, unfortunately, have been put in a situation where they have to make a decision what's best for them and their families. Uh, I think our job as legislators, both at the federal and the state government, is to continue to sift through all this information. You know, it's like drinking out of a fire hose with uh, the, you know, the NTSB investigation, all these hearings, and then make sure we're not reactionary. But like I said, figuring out ways to now and in the future, God forbid this happens again, uh, to uh, make sure we have a system in place to deliver resources you know to people that need it and so they can make the best decision possible um i think right now um outside of just the ongoing efforts to mitigate uh any of the you know kind of natural disaster health health effects um with the soil and the water etc um we just can continue to uh overdo overdo it on transparency and communication yeah, but I think, you know, when you have Governor DeWine, who is drinking tap water out of people's homes and saying it's OK, it's safe. And then you have people who are worried that bottled water wouldn't be safe. I mean, what would you do? What would you advise if you had kids? I don't know if you have kids um, or siblings. I got two little boys. Yeah. Right in the room. Yeah. What, what would you what would you do in your own home? Yeah, I mean, look, I feel for the people of East Palestine. I mean, animals are dropping dead in the creeks, rivers, uh, in, in the you know their front yards. Uh, there's, as we've heard, as you know, you, you reported earlier, um, some immediate health issues like skin rashes, headaches, and stuff. Um, you know, I think we've already seen it. A lot of people have kind of had to leave their home, and and that's the decision that they felt is best for them and their family. So it's hard for me to say. I don't like to to play in speculation, but it seems like a lot of folks in East Palestine are making you know a decision just to kind of leave temporarily, and you know that's the the unfortunate human and financial cost that yeah. we 
I think that's what we got to get right because lives have been impacted not only on the health side, but also on the financial side. It's tough yes. to just pick up and leave when you got to get to work on time. You got to get the school kids and paying to for a hotel. It's it's expensive. Yeah, and on it top of a up. mortgage. On yeah. top of a mortgage. So yeah, you know, you're that's what I want right. to figure out now. So those are individual kind of decisions, but what we got to get right is is this kind of health, human, and financial aspect. State uh, representative. Now forward. Thank you very much, Steve Demetrio. We appreciate you joining us this morning, and our best to you and your family. Thanks, Adrian. God bless. Thank you, Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.